My 25-year-old husband has a very delusional sister-in-law who we will call Kelly. Kelly is the girlfriend of my husband's late brother. They were not married, but she was allowed to be called sister-in-law for the sake of their four-year-old son, hence the title half-cooked sister-in-law. Kelly was actually a nice person at first, but her delusional tendencies just go over the top. She once accused a cousin of my husband of seducing her, claiming he was madly in love with her, which was never true as he treated her the same as everyone else. My issues started with her when she started targeting my husband and making all kinds of requests. She once asked him to sleep in their unit because she said her son was scared. Mind you, they only had one bed on the floor in a tiny square room, which was the whole unit. We asked her to come over to our home, which was larger and had enough space for her to stay for a while, since we also had a spare room she and the child could use. She refused and insisted that my husband come over. My husband refused and told his mom, who then had Kelly go over to their house and stay for a while. The second incident was when she insisted that my husband should go with her and her child to the mall and spend some time together because, according to her, she needs help since she is a helpless single mother with a fatherless child and her child needs a father figure. My husband asked if I could go with them, but she made excuses why I couldn't go. My husband outright refused and suggested she bring the maid assigned to her kid since my mother-in-law sponsored a maid for them due to all the things she complained about. After all of that, Kelly started picking up on things my husband likes. He likes that I wear skin-tight dresses and leggings because it complements my bum. She started wearing the same clothes. My husband likes a certain food I make for him. She learned how to make the food and purposely makes too much so she can give some to him in front of me with a smug smile. And it didn't stop there. She also tries to copy me in as many ways as she can. Whenever I buy something new, she buys the same thing within the next three to four days. My husband and I like dogs, so I adopted a puppy. And what do you know, she got one a week after. She copies everything, clothes, makeup, jewelry, etc. It was getting a little creepy. Until one day at a family gathering, she outright stated that my husband's nephew, her child, looks so much like my husband and could pass off as his kid. My husband and his nephew look nothing alike. His nephew has his late father's face, while my husband and his brother look nothing alike. I blurted out, no, they don't, which was followed by my husband's sister saying, are you blind? They look nothing like each other. I would say he has his father's face. Kelly then responded, actually, people would mistake them like a father and son. She then proceeded to show a wallpaper on her phone of my husband and his nephew smiling together. I looked at the phone and at her and said, Oh, is this why you've been trying to get my husband's attention the whole time? Confused, my mother-in-law asked, What do you mean? I casually said, Well, why don't you ask Kelly? She's been trying to get my husband alone with her for some time now. Good thing your son's not an idiot. Kelly then shouted, What the hell is your problem? I was just trying to give my son some normalcy and experience having a family and a father. By trying to take my husband? You are a home wrecker in the making, a stalker and a creep. No wonder no one would date you. God, your child would be better off without his intimacy worker of a mom in his life. I yelled back at her. I stood up, thanked everyone for their time, and proceeded to leave with my husband. On the way home, my husband told me that what I said wasn't nice. I asked him if he was defending her. He said no. He said that Kelly deserves to be told off, but not in a humiliating manner, and definitely not in front of the kids. We didn't talk for the rest of the way home. I'm now here typing this out in the toilet. I just really couldn't take her delusional self anymore, and that's why I exploded. So am I the jerk? By the way, sorry if it sounds confusing. English isn't my first language and I am still learning. Update. Thanks for all the comments and votes. This will be a little update on what happened in the past few hours. I understand where I may have been in jerk, but with the feelings I had, it's not really possible. I have anger issues, 
but it has died down a bit since getting help and having the support of my husband. However, there are times where you really just can't control it. By the way, my husband and I had a little talk about the incident. He said I wasn't wrong in correcting her, but I was wrong in insulting her. He was just a little disappointed in how I handled the situation by letting my anger take control. As for my mother-in-law, she called and asked if I was okay. She reprimanded me for my actions, but also showed sympathy for the fact that I was offended by Kelly. She asked if Kelly and I could come over and have a talk to straighten things out and see if Kelly needs help. She explained how Kelly's actions may not be favorable, but her situation is something to feel pity for. My mother-in-law thought that losing her son, Kelly's husband-ish, and having to take care of a child alone was too much for her. She asked if it would be okay if I talked to Kelly and explained to her why what she did wasn't okay. And if Kelly refuses to listen, then my mother-in-law said she would have to handle it herself. As for my husband, he understands if I'm not ready to face Kelly, but he thinks it would be the better option. He suggests that we go low contact with her for a while, without completely cutting her off for the sake of the child. I'll update you guys if anything else happens. Now, for a few comments before the update. Comment 1. There's no point sitting down with Kelly. She will just deny everything and paint you as insecure and crazy. You and your husband should just block her. Comment 2. Love that everyone in the comments is like, Phew, yeah, not how I would have phrased that. Bit rough, but yeah, not the idiot. El Mao. Now, for the update. Thanks for all the comments and votes. This will be a little update on what happened in the past few hours. After the blowout at the family gathering, things have been tense. My husband and I had a long discussion about everything that went down. He agreed that Kelly's behavior was out of line, but he was firm in his belief that my response was too harsh, especially in front of the family and the kids. He's usually the calm one, and he reminded me that we should handle things in a way that wouldn't make the situation worse. The next day, my mother-in-law called. She was upset about the whole ordeal. She didn't condone what I said to Kelly, but she understood where I was coming from. She's always been the mediator in the family, trying to keep the peace. She suggested that Kelly and I should sit down and talk things out. She believes that Kelly might be struggling with the loss of her partner and the pressures of single motherhood, and that maybe she just needs some guidance or professional help. I wasn't thrilled about the idea of talking to Kelly, but I agreed to think about it. My husband thought it might be good to clear the air, but he also said we should take some time before making any decisions. He suggested we keep our distance from Kelly for a while, just to let things cool off. The following day, Kelly tried to reach out. She sent a text to my husband, apologizing for her behavior, and asking if we could all meet up and talk. My husband didn't reply right away. He wanted to discuss it with me first. We were both wary of her intentions, considering her past actions. That evening, we heard from my sister-in-law, the one who had backed me up at the gathering. She said that Kelly had been talking to other family members, trying to get them on her side. She was painting herself as the victim, saying that I had overreacted and that she was just trying to do what's best for her son. It felt like she was trying to turn the family against us. My husband was frustrated. He didn't want his family to be divided, but he also didn't want to give in to Kelly's manipulations. We decided to hold off on responding to her text. We needed more time to think about how to handle the situation without causing more drama. The next day, my mother-in-law called again. She said she had spoken to Kelly, who was insistent on making amends. My mother-in-law was pushing for us to meet and talk it out. She was worried about the family being torn apart. She also mentioned that Kelly's son had been asking about us, which made me feel guilty. He's just an innocent kid caught up in all of this. My husband and I talked it over again. We were both conflicted. On one hand, we wanted to protect our own peace and not get dragged into more drama. On the other hand, we didn't want to be the reason the family was splitting up. We also thought about the kid, who didn't ask for any of this. We decided to take a few days to think about our next move. We agreed that if we did talk to Kelly, 
it would be in a neutral place with my mother-in-law present. We wanted to make sure that there was someone else there to mediate and keep things civil. As of now, we haven't made any concrete plans to meet with Kelly. My husband and I are still trying to figure out the best way to approach the situation. We're both a little on edge, not knowing how this is going to play out. It's a difficult position to be in, and we're just hoping that whatever decision we make, it's the right one for everyone involved. I'll update you guys if anything else happens. Now, for the comments. Comment 1. You're navigating a soap opera with grace. Kelly's single white female act is a red flag parade. It's one thing to borrow a sweater, but trying to claim your hubby's jeans? That's next level bonkers. Stick to your guns and maybe gift her a Netflix subscription. She needs a new hobby. Comment 2. Been there. My cousin twice removed, thank goodness for the removal, tried to convince my grandma that I stole her heirloom earrings. Spoiler, I didn't. Family drama should be a reality show category. Keep your cool and maybe bring a referee whistle to the next family shindig. Now, for the next story. Hi all, so I already think I'm in jerk and bad friend for this, but wanted to take to Reddit to verify. I, 28-year-old female, have a best friend, M, 28-year-old female, who is pregnant with her first, and possibly only, child. M has had a very rough pregnancy, and I've tried being there for her as much as she wants, needs me to be. I've given her plenty of hand-me-down baby things that my child, two-month-old, has grown out of or doesn't play with any longer. Recently, she's told me she and her husband, 28-year-old male, have come up with the perfect plan for after the baby arrives. She will take care of the baby for the time her husband is working, working the third shift. He will relieve her when he gets home so she can sleep, and then he'll wake her up so he can get some shut-eye before going back to work. I admit, I laughed at this when she told me, not maliciously or mockingly, I just found it kind of funny. She asked me what was so funny, and I responded that my partner, 30-year-old male, and I came up with some perfect plans only for them to fall through once the baby was actually here. I told her that I slept when the baby slept, let my house go for a few months unless I had family over helping, and fantasized about some not-so-nice things regarding my partner while he slept peacefully while I was up with the baby. She got upset and responded that just because we couldn't work it out didn't mean she and her partner couldn't. I told her that she was completely right, that while our plans had fallen through, it didn't mean that theirs would, but that she should consider a contingency, just in case. She got mad and told me they could do it. I replied that I'm rooting for them. I have no doubt that they'll be amazing parents. I have no doubt they'll be a great team. I just don't think they should have perfect plans. Anyone with kids will tell you that babies absolutely ruin perfect plans, and it takes some getting used to. Every parent has had to learn this, but just like the majority have told us before, until it's real, you have no idea what you're getting into. So go ahead and make your perfect plans and watch them go out the window two seconds later. So am I the idiot for laughing at her perfect plan? Update. Thank you to everyone for sharing their insights and opinions regardless of being in jerk status. I have since apologized to my friend for laughing, and she said it wasn't a big deal, since she's seen my toddler in action since he's been born and understands where I was coming from. We're currently finishing up our planning, organizing, and crafting for her baby shower. That's this coming weekend. We're expecting about 100 people, and she's very excited. We're hoping it will be a fun day, but I'm just going to focus on her having as stress-free a day as possible. Thank you all again. Now, for a few comments before the update. Comment 1. Not the idiot. Friends can and should laugh at each other, as long as it's not constant or malicious. It seems all you were doing was giving her the benefit of experience. No battle plan survives contact with the enemy. Comment 2. I agree with you, and it doesn't sound like you said it to spite or hurt her on purpose, but you could have been more gentle about it, considering that she's pregnant and very hormonal sensitive right now. Now, for the update, it's been a whirlwind of a week since my last post. 
The baby shower came and went, and it was a huge success. We had a turnout of about 90 people, slightly less than expected, but it was still a blast. M was glowing the entire time, and everyone showered her with love and gifts. I was running around making sure everything was going smoothly, and thankfully, it did. After the shower, M and I spent hours sorting through gifts and writing thank you cards. It was during this time that she brought up her perfect plan again. She mentioned that she and her husband had been discussing some of the points I had made and were considering some backup options. I felt a bit relieved that they were thinking things through more realistically. The next few days were a mix of emotions. M's husband had to rush her to the hospital due to some complications. It was a false alarm, but it shook them up pretty good. They realized that even the pregnancy wasn't going according to plan, let alone what might happen after the baby arrives. During this time, I tried to be as supportive as possible. I took care of their dog while they were at the hospital and made sure they had a meal to come home to. It was a small gesture, but they were appreciative. Once things settled down, M's husband and I had a chance to talk. He confided in me that he was feeling overwhelmed with the upcoming responsibilities and the pressure to stick to their plan. I reassured him that it's normal to feel that way and that they'll find their rhythm as parents, plan or no plan. The following day, Em and I met up for a walk in the park. She seemed more relaxed than I had seen her in weeks. She admitted that the scare at the hospital was a wake-up call. She said they were now focusing on being flexible and taking things one step at a time. As we walked, we saw a couple struggling with a stroller and a crying baby. M looked at them, then at me, and said, that's going to be us soon, isn't it? I nodded, and we both laughed, not out of mockery, but out of an understanding that no matter how much you plan, life has its own ideas. The week ended with another unexpected twist. Emmy's husband got a call about a job opportunity in another state. It's a great position, but it would mean moving before the baby arrives. They're torn about what to do. On one hand, it's a chance for him to advance his career and provide for his family. On the other, it would mean leaving behind their support system and starting anew. They haven't made a decision yet, and I can tell they're both stressed about it. M is worried about finding a new doctor and hospital, and her husband is concerned about the timing. They asked for my opinion, but I didn't know what to say. It's such a personal decision, and I don't want to sway them one way or another. So here we are, at the end of the week, with everything up in the air. They might be moving across the country, or they might be staying put. Their perfect plan has already been challenged in more ways than one, and the baby isn't even here yet. I'm doing my best to be there for them, but I can't help but feel anxious about what's to come. Will they move? Will they stay? How will this affect their plans as new parents? It's anyone's guess at this point. All I know is that whatever happens, I'll be there for them, just like I promised. Now, for the comments. Comment 1. Hey, it's tough when plans get shaken up, especially with a baby on the way. Maybe you could help M and her husband brainstorm some flexible strategies or connect them with a local parents group for support. It's all about having a solid plan B or C. Comment two. I remember when my sister was pregnant, she had this super detailed birth plan. Well, labor laughed in the face of that plan. It's wild how quickly things can change. Sounds like you're a great friend for sticking by them through the ups and downs. If you liked this video, you'll probably like these too. Also, while you're here, please consider subscribing. It's your support that keeps this channel alive and allows me to make better and longer videos. Have a great day.